What's up guys, I'm Josh Mosman and welcome to This Week in MXA, episode number 16 presented to you by O'Neill Racing. In this video, we're jam packed with lots of action. We got interviews with Austin Forkner and Roger DeCoster. The MXA Wrecking Cruise has some awesome exotic two stroke builds like a KX500 and a YZ300. And we get some footage of Jet Lawrence and Trey Kennard doing some testing at Glen Helen. Diving into the first topic, let's hear from Austin Forkner about how his recovery is going, how his training and testing is going for the outdoor national season, and I even ask him about the rumor question about when he's jumping up to the 450 class as well. We're just out here at Glen Helen today, um, just riding, testing some outdoor stuff. Off with my collarbone for I think six weeks, like from whenever I did it to whenever I started riding again. So um, pretty much full outdoor swing now, ever eight in the Supercross. A little bit, so there's actually quite a bit of guys out here today riding riding outdoors. So um, we showed up late to get the track a little bit rougher to test. I'll be back for the uh, last two rounds at Salt Lake, last two Supercross rounds. I think I'll probably start riding Supercross here in a couple weeks or so again, but I'm um, just trying to set up the outdoor bikes right now. The thing is the chassis. Um, the engine took a little bit to get figured out, but we kind of got it sorted out in Supercross. Start over now for outdoors. Um, since it's the first year on this bike, we didn't have a base setting and I haven't ridden outdoors in a, a year or two anyway. Yeah. So I didn't have really a good base setting and then now we're on a new bike. So I'm kind of having to start from square one. Obviously the electric start, where they, they put the battery and stuff, it, it really changed the balance of the bike. So how we set up the old bike, we learned real quick and Supercross is not is not how we go about setting this bike up. So we had to change some stuff. But, but what we learned from Supercross I mean, you have to set the bikes up pretty much completely different, but some of the things that we learned, how the bike reacts to certain things, we, we brought two outdoors. Um, so I feel like it's gone a little bit more smoother because it's in a different way. It's like the second time around, you know, setting a bike up. So um, we, uh, I feel like it's been a little bit smoother, but yeah, we're, we're definitely getting that. With this injury, I think the plans are kind of going to change a little bit. Um, I'm not exactly sure, um, but the plan was to originally, I think, to go up to the big bike next year, but now um, I'm not gonna point out now since I've missed all these races. So don't quote me, but I, I, I think I'm gonna do next year on the 250, but it's still it's still early in the season. That could change depending on how I do outdoors. I mean, that, that a lot of things can change. Um, I don't know exactly if I would do the full year next year on a 250, maybe go 450 outdoors. I, I, I don't really know at this point. Um, we're just kind of get through outdoors, see how I do there and uh, yeah, go from there. So we didn't learn any concrete information from Austin Forkner about his plans to the move to the 450 class, but it was still interesting to hear where his headspace, where his mindset was at on moving up to the premier class. And we know that Kawasaki's gotta be looking at Eli Tomac, wondering if he's got a few more years in him or if he's gonna call it quits sometime soon. So Eli Tomac is only 28 years old, but if he leaves anytime soon, that'll make a lot more room and space on the team for Austin Forkner. Diving into the next topic, I ran into Roger DeCoster last week and got a cool interview with him at the KTM headquarters talking about how the pandemic has affected the sport of motorcycling in general, how it's affected Supercross and motocross at a professional level, and I got to ask him about the current Supercross season, what it's like to work with Cooper Webb, and kind of their dynamic duo going on right now in the middle of the Supercross season. Well, we, we um, I think most of, most of the guys on our team are really uh, happy and lucky to feel lucky to be able to continue doing our sport. And uh, it's been good that uh, we start to be able to get some, some spectators at the Supercross now. And, so in that way, we feel really lucky and we, we are one of the only well, very few sports that, uh, that have been able to do that. So we, we're proud of that and hopefully they will open things up uh, more and follow the lead from uh, Texas, Florida and, and those states. Yeah. I wish it, uh, it would happen in California as well. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, it's, it's a nice problem to have. And uh, when, when this uh, pandemic started, uh, of course, uh, we didn't see any upsides at all. And, uh, but pretty quick, uh, people, they wanted to go outside. They wanted to be outdoors. And that's why they gone into motorcycles and uh, bikes and uh, exercise and try to, to stay fit. Of course, the fitter you are, the, the, the better you'll be able to handle if this, this thing catches you. Yeah, of course, um, you know, it, uh, it feels awesome to, to be part of it and uh, to, to watch him, uh, what he has been doing. And, uh, 
uh, be able to help in some areas and awesome guy to work with and uh, it's pretty amazing to see what he has been able to do under under heavy pressure i think it can work to uh, to your advantage and he can work again to, against it also you know and the the riders that uh, can stay uh, think clearly through things they are going to benefit from it you cannot approach the next race just by the result uh, from the previous race you you have to analyze what you did with your bike, you know, your strategy in the race and all that, and, and make small adjustments. And uh, you, you cannot go, oh, I won the first one. Now it's, we leave everything the same and I'm going to do exactly the same thing and I'm going to win the next two. Uh, it usually doesn't work that way. Next up on the list, I had a blast last Thursday riding and testing out of Glen Helen. First reason, we were riding some really cool two-stroke builds. Second reason, and the best part about it, is I got to ride alongside MXA's Daryl Eklund doing some riding, testing, and some photo shoots as well. So Daryl's usually behind the scenes, taking pictures. This time, he got to jump back in front of the camera, and we had a blast riding two-strokes together. Actually, the bike itself is like really smooth, easy to ride compared to like what you think a KX500 is super gnarly. Um, overall, like this bike really is way more fun than you think it is. It's scary at the same time, but the suspensions plus race tick did a great job on that. Tom Morgan did a great job on the engine, and the KX Guru Racing who really helped Jay Clark make this into a new age KX500. Uh, put their K450 rear wheel on it, uh, K450 rear caliper. It's kind of new age machine. Overall, it's really top heavy. If we can cut this off right here, make this a lot smaller, cut the tank off, lower the center of gravity, it'd be a lot easier to throw around. Yeah. It's not my fault I can't whip it that hard on it. <laughs> is that your fault or is it? It is my fault. It's kind of the gut's fault too. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. This uh, gets old. Uh, it's pretty sick to see you on a, on a bike doing photos and videos. How long has it been since you've been the photo guy? Uh, last time I did it was 2018. Before that, 2006. 16. Really? Uh, I've been behind the lens since John Bastard left. Uh, this, is a, this is nice. It's like brings back to me, brings back to my roots. Where I originally wanted to, get, why I wanted to get this job is to ride cool bikes. Now guys like you, skinny guys, get to do all the fun. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see if you can kick it first try. All right. Push it in. That's done. Nice and high. Some gas. No, nope, not first try. Next up on the list, it was super cool to see Trey Kennard and Jet Lawrence doing some outdoor testing at Glen Helen last Thursday. Jet Lawrence was hop, skip, and jumping around the track. He made it look super easy. Trey Kennard, he was doing some 250 testing for Jet Lawrence and Hunter Lawrence, and he said that he's been having a blast riding 250s again. <laughs>
right, guys. So that's it for this week in MXA episode number 16. Thank you for tuning in. As always, make sure to check out motocrossactionmag.com as this week we got MXA's Travis Fant and Brian Converse out at the Atlanta Motor Speedway covering the massive triple header that they got going on there for Supercross. We've got a lot of Supercross content on our website, so check us out over there for that. And click the subscribe button on our YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with our latest videos. And if you have some more time, click the video thumbnails now for our latest releases.